Hello, and welcome to this tutorial on how to uh, import and build an APK using Android Studio and BuzzTouch version 3.0 project files. Uh, traditionally, we've been using, using the Eclipse ADT bundle to do this, but uh, Google has decided to go ahead and kind of force Android Studio on us, so we're going to go through the steps on how you can bring your project into Android Studio and generate an APK. Uh, we're not going to do anything else other than that. We're not going to make any modifications or do code stuff or anything like that. It's simply generating an APK. So here we go. The first thing you're going to want to do is download your project files from BuzzTouch. And um, I happen to have a project that I use for these kinds of things. It's a test project. So you want to go into your control panel <clears throat> and then you want to um, Go to the download the iOS or Android project for whatever the application's name is. Um, pick all the screens that you want, the plugins that you want. Make sure that they are at least Android or Android and iOS. Make sure you're not, you know, picking any iOS only plugins because they won't work in Android and they'll just call you cause you problems. So I've gone ahead and picked the basic ones here and then I'm going to do a, I did this once before, so I'm just going to do a do-over prepare project again. And it will package it up for us. <clears throat> and once it's ready, you can do the download zip archive and send it to where you want it to go. And I happen to have a folder for it, so we're going to go save it in there. So there we go. Okay, so it's all saved. Next thing we want to do is extract those files. Go ahead and double click on that, and I am doing this, this on a Mac in case you haven't figured it out. It's running uh, Yosemite, it's a MacBook Pro. So we've gone ahead and extracted everything. I'm just going to delete a couple files that I don't think we need for the actual thing that we're going to compile. Um, you know, you can keep those or delete them, whatever you want to do. Okay, so I've done that. So we're basically ready to go ahead and fire up Android Studio. Now, I will warn you, depending on where you are in the process of using Android Studio, sometimes it can be very slow when it fires up, and then sometimes it's actually kind of fast. So it's hit and miss. Uh, hopefully you've got Android Studio installed. If you don't, uh, check out the other videos on this channel, uh, because I have several videos that show you how to install Android Studio. So you should be able to get going with that. And it looks like we are in one of those instances where it's kind of slow. So we will uh, see what happens. In case you're wondering about the background on my screen there, uh, it's actually the side of Sunset Crater outside of Flagstaff, Arizona. Um, we went there a couple of days ago when it was all snowy and everything, and it was quite beautiful. And there was this one lone tree on the side of the crater. It looked kind of cool, so I snapped a picture of it. So Android Studio is being exceptionally slow this time. There it goes, it's coming up now. Uh, this is the release candidate version of Android Studio, and it's the latest version, so if you don't have the latest version, you might want to go ahead and download that or update your current version to the latest version. Okay, uh, Android Studio is finally up. If this is the first time that you've used Android Studio, you might see a different screen than this. Um, hopefully you've gone through the things you need to go through to have this be your start screen. Uh, notice we are using Android Studio 1.0.2, build 135.165.3844. And I did check for updates the other day, so I know this is the most recent build as of today, Friday, January 9th, 2015. So what we're going to do is we're going to be importing a non-Android Studio project. So you want to click on that, and it's going to give you the folder structure here, and fortunately I've done this one earlier, so it goes right to this uh, folder. So this is the root folder for the extracted project that you did. So go ahead and hit OK. And it's asking for an import destination directory. So um, Android Studio actually copies the entire project to wherever you want it to go, and it doesn't alter the original Eclipse project, which is kind of cool, because if for some reason things get screwed up, then you have the original version there with no changes to it. So um, when you install Android Studio, it creates a folder under your root here. And I don't know where this would go on, on Windows, but 
shouldn't be too hard to find, um, called Android Studio Projects, and then it'll create a folder for each project that you open. So I'm just going to go ahead and accept the default and hit Next. Now here's the important thing. Uh, you want to deselect these. Uh, the file structure and a whole bunch of other stuff is completely different with Android Studio because it uses Gradle for compiling as opposed to, I'm forgetting what it is for Eclipse, but if you keep these two selected, then it's going to go try to do a whole bunch of different things to try to change things and it basically won't work. So you need to make sure you deselect those two items. And then go ahead and hit finish. And this is where it takes a little bit of time because it's going to go out and it's going to do some compiling and some importing and some building and all this kind of stuff. And if you don't have some of the stuff that it uses, then it's actually going to have to go out to the internet and download it. So if this is the first time you've done it, it may take longer than subsequent times. So you have to be patient. I know the first time I did it, it took quite a while, but eventually it came up. So again, this whole thing is built on the Gradle compiler. It's completely different from what we've been using before. And if we want to be able to import these things kind of natively into Android Studio, the Buzz Touch guys are going to have to do some changes on how the uh, uh, package files are, are packaged up because it's different for Android Studio. All right, so it's doing this thing. And once it's done, so if you look down here on the bottom toolbar, you can see what's going on. Uh, if you get a little spinny there, you know something is working. So, okay, so I apologize for the fan noise on the MacBook. Hopefully it's not too bad, but that happens with uh, Eclipse and Studio. So notice we got two errors and one warnings. We don't really care about the warnings, but the errors, of course, is something that we're going to want to take a look at. So one of them has to do with this Google Play Services version. And we should actually expect that because we haven't linked in the Google Play Services library yet. So once we do, that one will go away. And then the other one has to do with uh, having a debug thing in the Android manifest. So don't worry about that right now because it's going gonna, it's gonna to get taken care of. All right, so now what we want to do is, first of all, we want to go ahead and make sure that we have downloaded the Google Play Services. Uh, so if you haven't, or you're not sure, you want to go over here to the SDK Manager, and we'll fire that up and, <clears throat> and take a look at what we've got on this system to make sure we have everything we need. So there's two things that we need in order to do the Buzz Touch projects. Uh, we need the Google Play Services, and then we need the Android 4.0 SDK. So if you look at what we got here, I'm not going to install anything because I know they already got it, but so we want the Android 4.0, the API 14. So remember, we want Android, not Google. In the past, we've wanted Google, but we want Android now. So those are, inst those are installed. And then we come down here and make sure we have the Google Play services, and that's installed. If those are not installed, you're going to have to install those first before you can uh, make any further progress. But since we're good, we'll go ahead and exit out of that. Now we want to come over here, and we're going to add the... Um, Google Play Services, so we go to File, and we go to Project Structure, and then we click here on App, and Dependencies, and this is where we include the things that we want to compile the project with. We're going to hit this Add button down here in the lower left-hand corner, and select Library Dependency. It's going to give us a list of, of libraries that are available, and we want the Play Services. And then we hit OK. And then we hit OK down here. And that's actually going to link in the Google Play services. Uh, so we don't have to import the Google Play services like we did previously. Um, this will go ahead and take care of it. So it's doing this thing down here. Notice the little spinny in the lower bottom middle section. So we'll let it run and see what happens. And theoretically, it should come up with zero errors. So yes. So we're down here, we got Gradle build finished with one warning in 14 seconds. So there's no errors. So we're all good. Um, notice I haven't done anything to the manifest file at all. I haven't put in any keys or anything like that. We're just showing how to compile here. I um, also point out this file, the import summary text, basically shows what it did um, because it copies things in differently. 
like I said, the Android Gradle projects use a different directory structure than the ADT Eclipse projects. So these are how things are changed, but we don't really need to worry about that. Okay, so now we're going to click on the app here, and now this is the time to build our APK. So we've highlighted the app on the left-hand side in the project folder there. We're going to do Build Generate Signed APK. So the module we want is app. It's really the only choice. Hit Next. So this is where we're going to either generate a um, key store or we're going to use an existing one. So I'm going to assume that most of you have not generated a key store yet. Um, and traditionally there's two types of key stores, a debug key store and a release key store. And these are basically keys that are used to sign the app to say that it came from a particular person. Um, so we're going to go ahead and generate a new debug key store. So I'll hit create new. Key store path. I'm going to go ahead and put it. I'm going to put it. Uh, I'm going to put it actually in the. No. I'm going to put it. So I already have one here from earlier, but I want to show you how to do it. So I'm going to put it in the Studio Projects folder just so I know where it's at. And that's kind of the root folder for all the Android Studio Projects we're going to use. And I'm going to call it debug2. A key store just to make it different. We'll hit OK. Password, traditional password for the Android debug key store. Um, key stores is Android. And then we'll confirm it. You can use, of course, whatever you want. And we'll just, so you have to give the key an alias. So we're going to call it a debug to key store. And then you need to give that a password, which I use Android for as well. So those are like default, so I'm not giving away any secrets here. Validity, you want to leave that at 25 or make it longer. And then you have to fill out at least one of these items from the certificate. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then we hit OK. And so it's just giving you the information you put in. So I'm going to hit Remember Password. So apparently with Android Studio, there's some sort of master password database. Not sure what that's all about, but I've used it before, so I have a password, and you can of course create whatever password you want. So I'm going to enter my password, and so now it's asking us destination folder, and basically it's going to go in the Studio Projects area. Uh, you can put it anywhere that you want. So I'm actually going to change that, and we will just put it in the root Studio Projects. And then the type we want in this case is a debug. You can do debug or release, whatever you want. And we'll hit finish. And we will give it a few moments to do its thing. So you can observe what it's doing again down here in the middle bottom section. And hopefully, fingers crossed, this will build without any problems. And you'll have an APK that you can test on your system. So this actually seems to be a little bit easier than it was in some of the earlier beta versions of Android Studio. Um, still seems a little slow to me, especially compared to Eclipse ADT, but maybe I'm just used to how slow Eclipse is. Um, we got some more fans, fan noise here, so I apologize for that. I'm going to stop talking for one second while it finishes its generation. Okay, so we have success. Uh, assigned APK has been generated successfully. It was signed with the debug key store, uh, so we can use it for debug purposes. Uh, if you want to reveal and find her, you go ahead and it tells you it's right here. So interestingly enough, it names it, instead of naming it like you usually did, like it should have been playtime. Uh, yeah, playtime.apk, it does app debug APK. So you can go ahead and change that if you want. So actually, let's go ahead and change that to play time. All right, so you actually have now an APK that you can send to somebody or put in Dropbox or some other place so that somebody can uh, upload it to their, to their uh, device and install it. So that is all there is to it. Um, that pretty much sums up how to import your BuzzTouch version 3.0 project into Android Studio, how to link to Google Play services, library, 
and then how to generate your key store and how to generate your APK file. Uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and post them in the buzztouch.com forum and I will certainly get to them. And uh, you can also message me via the YouTube channel. So I hope you've learned something here. Um, please go to buzztouch.com and sign up if you haven't. It's an amazing site. And um, just let me know if you have any questions. All right, happy developing, and we will talk to you later.